What is up? What is up, YouTube hexagons? So today I want to talk a little bit here, day 14 out of uh, 100 days of hex, the last 100 days of the uh, launch phase. So today I want to talk a little bit about the uh, Uniswap V2 performance because I think that is uh, that's quite some interesting kind of data to kind of uh, look at. So Uniswap has had, the Uniswap V2 has had amazing volume and fees uh, and it probably will do a Coinbase Pro flip. If you don't know what Coinbase Pro is, well, I, I kind of searched for Coinbase on like, I think CoinMarketCap and it seems like they only have this thing called Coinbase Pro now, which is supposed to be one of the largest centralized exchanges, at least in um, uh, around the world, especially in America. And it's kind of interesting here. So Uniswap is a decentralized exchange and uh, its volume has been growing kind of crazy lately. And it's kind of interesting just uh, to see that and to kind of look at it a little bit quick. So if I go right now to uniswap.info and uh, under, uh, the, that's a good website where you can kind of see the latest stats. So the liquidity right now has just gone up to $300 million. And it was so it's up to three hundred million dollars now, and it's been um, rising pretty extreme here, pretty intensely here in um, in August. So if I go back just um, July the first, it was forty four million dollars liquidity, and now it's up at three hundred million dollars liquidity. That is pretty pretty interesting. And if I go back to just uh, May the fifteenth. Oh wow! <laughs> no, wait a sec. Let's go, let's go to let's go to mid eighteenth. It was just one million dollar in liquidity, and now it's three hundred x higher. So, what is the liquidity? What kind of coins is it? Well, Ether wrapped yeah, ETH uh, seems to be the most one hundred and thirty four million dollars. So that is the biggest source of liquidity, and then we have some stable coins here like USDC seventy million dollars and Tether USD. Uh, around 70 million dollars and then you have some other coins here die stable coin ample forth which i don't know anything about uh cent usd seems to also be some stable coin you have some yearn finance thing here which um i mean if i go to yearn finance the annoying thing is like i don't know what goes on because if i go to the website it's very very hard to know what they're doing it, sure you can get like appreciation or something like that but it's not very very clear about what is actually going on it's very very hard to find text information about what is 100 percent going on it's it's very hard to find the um, the code the team or whatever so i haven't really looked into your finance uh but um yeah four million dollars liquidity chain link token also three million dollars liquidity but you can see that most of the liquidity here is stable coins or ether ether wrapped but yeah i mean i still think it's it's insanely impressive actually uh, that they can that they already are up to 300 million dollars in liquidity and the volume is also pretty interesting because it's been up here in august to around 200 million dollars uh, daily volume by the way the fees uh, is at the moment uh, last 24 hours sitting at four hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars almost a half a million dollars i think this is just the gas fees to ethereum miners uh i think that's how it works but it's what i think is most interesting is this aspect that compared to coinbase it's uh yeah it's getting closer to these centralized exchanges and uh we haven't had uniswap v2 for that long so coinbase pro last 24 hour trading volume was 432 million dollars and they only have a 30 coins and 82 pairs if we compare that to uniswap they have 5929 pairs so yeah i mean uh, <laughs> In a way, yes, you also then get more nonsense with Uniswap because I think anyone can kind of list list its coin, but uh, not everything is nonsense. But uh, 135,000 transactions also last 24 hours on Uniswap. Uh, Ethereum went about $400 again, which I find pretty impressive. But yeah, I mean, 
it looks like these decentralized exchanges are going to kind of take over. Now the ETH gas fees are very, very high. Uh, it's like, cost like, I mean, let's look. If I would do, if I would buy some hex now on Uniswap, let's see how much it would cost. Because uh, I heard that the gas fees should be kind of up again today. So if I go to ETH and I just um, put in some amount here, uh, tap swap. Let's see. Oh my God, eight dollars. Yeah, right now the gas fees on Ethereum <laughs> is around eight dollars, almost nine dollars. But for me personally, I think that that is almost a little bit exciting because it's like okay, the miners are getting paid a lot, so maybe they maybe they get more excited about Ethereum, maybe they innovate faster on Ethereum. When I did this a couple of months ago, it was like ten cents or something like that. Maybe maybe twenty five cents. And when it was like twenty five cents, you were like, wow, this is uh, kind of a lot here. But compared to now, it's like super expensive, right? So yeah, the way gas price and the gas limit, you need to like amp it up like crazy. Yeah, around eight dollars for <laughs> around eight dollars for uh for for buying some coins it is uh it is kind of interesting right and uh yeah but coinbase pro only is below half a million dollars in volume and um and the the coins that they're doing right they are doing mainly the um yeah they're doing bitcoin omg i mean most of the volume is coming to yeah chain link Bitcoin and Ethereum is obviously the main guys that uh, Coinbase are kind of uh, focusing on. But as we hexagons know, for example, if we did with Hex, for example, are we ever going to see that list on Coinbase? It doesn't seem like it, or at least not right now. I mean, I mean, things may kind of change, but we know that Hex uh, popularized Uniswap, especially with the V1. Uh, nobody talked about Uniswap, it, like hexagons, they started to use it to trade hex against Ethereum. And then a bunch of these other uh, kind of pairs and nonsense, they came to Uniswap uh, after, after hex. And, um, and yeah, hexagons basically popularized Uniswap. And it's nice now to see that kind of Uniswap will kind of take over uh, a lot of these, I think, centralized exchanges that offer a worse service because for example if you want to use coinbag coinbase they kind of do like a kyc and like track your coins when they come in and when they come out and they and they're looking at what you're doing with your coins which obviously is like something that probably not many people like that uh, that they're doing and yeah if, if we take a look at the binance volume uh binance uh, dex uh, so if we take Binance US, for example, we can see that the volume is just, wow, it's just $28 million, uh, 24 hours. That is not that high, man. Like that is not, that's not that high, <laughs> $28 million. But if we take on their larger exchange, it is, uh, if you take with Binance, the larger exchange is yeah okay it's three billion dollars okay 24 hour volume and that's the that's one of the largest centralized exchanges but i mean uh, i mean uh, with around 200 million dollars volume on a decentralized exchange like uniswap i mean it's kind of getting up there right it seems like it's going to get up there maybe even kind of soon if we take huobi take huobi global and we look uh, they only have 1.7 billion in um, in 24 hours volume. So it seems like these decentralized alternatives like Uniswap, it seems like they're going to grow and it seems like they're going to be become eventually the main places where people kind of exchange tokens, right? Uh, because like, why do it centralized when you can kind of do it decentralized? Yeah, and uh, and also that there's so much shady stuff going on with these bigger guys like Binance and Huobi what they've done to smaller crypto crypto companies and kind of extorted some of them. There's a bunch of stories about that. Chico Crypto has covered it a little bit about, about Binance, the Binance stories, how Binance and Huobi kind of took over the, the Steam blockchain and how they now own most of the coins in the Hive blockchain system. 
yeah, they're not doing good things, right? Uh, and how they probably, like, if you want to be listed on Binance or Coinbase or something, you probably have to pay them uh, a massive fee. Maybe not so much with Coinbase, who knows? But, uh, I mean, the problem with them, the problem with Coinbase and Binance is they're not so inclusive. Uh, and the future is being inclusive and let people... Uh, yeah, and I mean, yeah, it's, it's it can be a problem in a way, right? Because... You see kind of what has happened now with the Uniswap a little bit, that there's a bunch of nonsense that people are kind of, uh, uh, people are listing all kinds of nonsense and that can have its downsides as well, right? So, you know, like, is it really 100% good? Like that people can use like list trash and people get wrecked? Who knows? Like, who knows? I mean, it, it all comes down to humans, right? How how, you, how humans are using something. And, uh, and yeah, but... Um, but but I think that most people, after they've used Uniswap, uh, they probably do not want to use... They probably do not want to go back to something centralized because it's just, like, so much worse. <laughs> It is used so much worse. So what I think is going to happen with these decentralized uh, alternatives is they most likely are going to become the most uh, dominating um, dominating places when it comes to quickly exchange something. It's also going to be interesting to see what's going to happen here with Ethereum. At the moment, uh, one Ethereum is around four hundred dollars and it was up to four hundred and forty dollars the um a couple of uh a couple of weeks ago it was at around four hundred and forty dollars and now it seems like it want to go up again and uh what i think is going to happen is like looking at polka dot that is um well i'm, I'm going to talk about that in another video um yeah especially the polka dot thing because it's really interesting but i mean if you're looking at things so what I what I think is gonna happen is it seems like Ethereum is gonna be the top coin eventually, like or or Ethereum or like ERC twenty coins. It seems like they are gonna dominate most of the top tens, which means I think that we are gonna get some kind of flipping here eventually. Now we see that obviously with Tether and Bitcoin, they're kind of friends with each other. They're kind of in bets with each other. Uh, but but if if um, but we have so many other stablecoin alternatives right now on on Uniswap, so the Tether story, even though Tether is also on the Uniswap, so. But um, but it, but I think most likely that Bitcoin is not going to be the top dog forever. Uh, you can you can go and and look at the. Uh, the, the Bitcoin dominance, you can see that how it uh, is trending down again. And it's been trending down since uh, 2013 when it was at 97 or 95 percent dominance. And it's it's been trending down. So it, it went down to all to use like 35 percent early 2018. And then it went, went up again to like, uh, what was it like? Let's go look at coin coin market cap. Even though I don't like coin market cap because they're kind of corrupt, but um, yeah, if you look at um, yeah, so it, it went down to like so it, it, in um, in twenty seventeen it was Bitcoin was at around eighty five percent dominance, and then in the beginning or actually in June twenty seventeen it went down to thirty seven percent dominance, uh, and if we're very close there to flip with thirty one percent dominance. And then um, we had early 2018, BTC went all the way down to 33% dominance. And then um, it kind of increased again, uh, all the way up to an all-time high here, almost like 70% dominance late 2019. But since then, it's been going down again. It was almost like a dead cat bounce on, uh, on Bitcoin dominance. So it really like, it steady went up from early 2018 uh, up to around late 2019 one of the main reason with that was yeah we got all these altcoins coming in but most of them like the, the teams were incompetent there were so many amateurs if the, if those teams were more competent 
and if they knew what they were doing then uh, bitcoin dominance wouldn't rise so fast but i think that this next time here because it was like a btc uh, dead uh, dead cat bounce here on the market cap it, it, yeah it like went up to 70 percent again but now it's starting to go down again and uh, it seems like it's gonna fall below 50 percent again so we can see that it is like it is kind of like a trend reversal reversal or i mean i guess you shouldn't call the trend reversal i mean the trend has been since 2013 that BTC dominance has been going down, has been going down. Sometimes it go, goes up a little bit a couple of months, but it's like the overall trend is that uh, altcoins will become, um, become larger uh, and they will have a larger market capitalization uh, on, on the whole industry. And then eventually what's going to happen is when BTC is just like maybe like 10% or like 5%, eventually people is going to give up on that and they're going to look at these larger things and see that oh okay so the bitcoin narrative kind of didn't work it out well okay maybe we should just look at what okay what what is the new biggest thing so maybe those narratives can kind of work much better because the btc narrative is not really working that well right like i talked to a guy on an online forum about bitcoin marketing and he said yeah we don't have any marketing with bitcoin because it's like it's so decentralized so we don't even have any marketing and and then i asked him like okay but how are you going to scale that how how are people going to know about that and uh, he didn't really have any good replies and and that's usually what you're seeing is like nobody really knows what they're supposed to do with the bitcoin and, and the narrative kind of sucks right like the only narrative they have right now is like oh i wish the usd uh, money print system collapses and then we're gonna be super rich in our little coin even though our coin we cannot calculate the value of it in this other coin and we want this other coin to kind of fail the usd fiat or euro stuff but it's like it doesn't really really make any logical sense like if that thing collapses then your thing probably also will collapse so so i've been talking a little bit about this that I, i've been talking about this a long time that um, bitcoin is kind of running on dead time it's kind of running on on uh, it should have died many years ago but it's 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 like people don't want to let go of the narrative but eventually i think they're going to be forced to realize change is coming and you shouldn't like resist change because if you resist change you resist life so change is coming okay change is coming people get bored of old narratives and the new narratives are probably going to have some other story that people find more engaging we had a period here a couple of years ago with like steam blockchain and the kind of narrative was okay maybe we can do the facebook of crypto and we were kind of close to, to succeed with that but um then some uh then some drama happened basically and it's too long story to kind of um it's too long story to like uh cover pretty quick but the thing was early 2018 it was nice to have a fresh new story a fresh new narrative because people want fresh narratives xrp guys tried the uh, the uh, the liquidity narrative right and that they're going to team up with the banks but how well did that narrative work uh xrp is down around 75 percent against uh, btc uh, since early 2019 so xrp is like uh, it's not as much down uh, versus uh, USD, but it's still like massive down against uh, USD, but massive, especially massive down, massive down against uh, BTC. And it's like this central, we're going to do the liquidity thing uh, with the banks and it's going to be amazing. We're going to team up with the banks, right? Uh, that, there, that That's also another narrative that people, a lot of people kind of liked, but then we see that uh, okay we also have a problem here okay sure it's a little cool narrative but then we can kind of see that oh nobody here is really competent competent enough to take action to actually make some cool stuff happen mm, and, it, and it's like boring like you, you you're looking at those communities to the xrp army and it's not that engaging it's not that fun the memes are not that cool they're not they're not even trying to make cool memes right they are it's very boring it's very lame right so we always need new stories we need new narratives 
And the Hicks trustless interest narrative, I think, is one of the best one ever to hit the, the industry when it comes to an engaging story and something that's based on truth and logic and something that is based on a real thing that people need, like some time lock thing to kind of save value and also so they can have some fun to speculate on, on some, some digital gold thing that doesn't have those um, miners constantly dumping on you. And so Hex is an extremely good narrative. It's, it's a nice new story that I actually think can work can work very easy because I don't see there's a, I don't see any any real competition to Hex at the moment if if you're looking at the, the overall industry. So yeah, so the trend here is decentralized exchanges like Uniswap keep on um, getting more liquidity, especially from stable coins. And uh, they're growing like crazy. Like the daily volume is at the moment on Uniswap V2 ranging from $100 million to up to $200 million. And that can just keep on going up into billions of dollars eventually in, uh, in daily volume. And that's going to be very, very exciting to kind of see. Because we didn't have good services like that in the past. Like one of the things in crypto is like <laughs> the, the challenge has always been like, okay, how do you first get people to get some coins first so they can get a personal experience of something? And uh, it wasn't that good 2017 and 2018. It was like only these centralized exchanges. But now we kind of have Uniswap and it's like, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better than, than the things that we had in the past. Same as I'm seeing some coins now coming up in top 10s and they're not amazing, but they're a little bit better than the stuff that we had in the past. And um, if you keep on doing these a little bit better increments, improvements, eventually stuff is going to get really, really good, right? Uh, if, you, if people are dedicated and keep improving on things. So yeah, the trends, decentralized exchanges on the rise like Uniswap. Bitcoin dominance going down in total market capitalization. And um, and the, yeah, the, the other trend is like new coins and, and like better, more interesting, engaging narratives and, and more cool people and, and better memes. That's what I want to talk a little bit about today. Have an awesome day. Day 14 out of 100 days of X. Bye-bye.